Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Warcraft Rumble Dungeon Guide, I'm going to take a look at Dead Mice on a Beast Week, and specifically this Charga army that I used to clear a level 23 dungeon with, so minus 2.6 with no really great relics either. So let's take a look at this army. First, a quick recap of the boss mechanics. The team of Dead Mice is free stuff. Uh, first boss, Mr. Smite, has lots of free stuff. These are free, these are free. These are free. There's going to be Stonehoof Torrents that are free. And yeah, so you're going up against quite overwhelming odds. There's a couple of gold veins here. There's a gold vein over there. There's a pair of meeting stones. And that is the map. And the way I like to play this map, I like to take this meeting stone and I like to push from here. So I control these two gold veins. I can mine from these and I push towards Smite from here. And that's basically the plan. I only defend the other side. I don't really go anywhere over there. There's a torrent that walks through this pipe. One way to beat it is to place Welpex over there. So the torrent's going to charge into Welpex and then the Welps are going to shoot at it. Or you can have some tanky minis that can also fight against it. I like to turn this arrow so that whenever I send minis here to defend, they will go over the bridge and then they will join the main assault. This other arrow can be used to get something to the meeting stone, but otherwise you just send them over here. These can be killed, for example, with Welbex as well, or, or just with a big assault and get at Smite and try to win. The second boss, Kuki, continues the same team of free stuff, because Kuki gets these huge swarms of minis for free. They come from this side, stay here for a while, Kuki is going to give them an additional level, and then they come from here. They also come from this side, stay for a while, Kuki gives them a level, and they come through here. So you need a way to deal with these swarms. There's basically three alternatives. Actually, maybe there's only two alternatives now that Safe Pilot has been nerfed, because it's been Safe Pilot plus Welpex, or Blizzard, or Living Bomb. My favorite is the Living Bomb, because if you Living Bomb them while they're near Kuki, Kuki is also going to get damaged. If you Living Bomb them while they're near a tower, the tower is going to get damaged. Depending on the level of your Living Bomb, you might even be able to take towers like that. And that just gives you a good way to get some towers. Other than that, the map includes a couple of chests, a couple of gold veins. Typically, I try to grab the chests at the opening and then attack this tower and this tower as soon as possible. I also try to send a miner here as soon as possible because there's two nuggets of gold right there. So if I can send a miner out there early, then it's going to just give me more gold. With all of this gold, I can then afford to do something like living bomb here when this, when this squad is moving in. Those living bombs, get some towers, then start assaulting Kuki and that's the second map. And the third boss, Sneed, has his own take on free stuff, because Sneed has these platforms. And when these platforms are sparkly like this, then the next mini that's going to step on them is going to be destroyed, and five copies of it are going to come down here. So Sneed has Molten Giants, for example, so if a Molten Giant steps here and gets copied, then you have to deal with five Molten Giants, or your own minis. So you can try to drop some Unbounds here, you can also keep sending stuff from here, for example, Cobalt Miners that are going to mine here and then walk over there, so you can try to get some of your own weaker minis copied to prevent more powerful minis being copied. That's the main Sneed mechanic. Other than that, there's a couple of gold veins, there's a chest over there and another chest over there. I like to attack here, take this tower first, then take this tower and then push from here towards Sneed and then just win from there. But the main problem is usually these platforms. One tip for the platforms is that this bridge is hugely important because everything comes down over here. So if you have ranged units on the bridge, then they can shoot down from the bridge and then they can just quickly kill anything that comes out. So that can help you control even those molten giants. The army that I use with Chaga includes Prowler, Quillbore, Angry Chickens, Living Bomb, Frostwolf Shaman and Abomination. And yeah, this army is a lot of fun for the first two bosses. I have actually tried multiple seven different variants of this idea. All of them cleared the first two bosses really easily, and I have struggled with Sneed with, well, pretty much most of them. So the idea is that we're going to make some armored abominations. And the preferred talent for abomination here is poison, because armored abomination is going to last forever, but it doesn't do a lot of damage, so poison adds more damage to it, which is really sweet. I have also done this with the stun talent though, so stun talent can be used, it's okay, it's fine, but poison is better for this specific use case. So Earth Shield Talent on Shaman is really, it's required for this build to work on higher difficulties. So Armored Abomination, Armored Abomination is just going to, well, it's going to kill Smite. 
it's going to kill Kuki, and then it's going to kill Sneed. Well, it's just going to kill everything. Then the question is, okay, how do I survive? Well, on first map, on Smite, you have Quillbar to grab the rightmost stone, so you will have control of that stone. You have chickens that are good against Prowlers, they're good against Stonehoof Torrin, so they can help you defend. And you have Prowler, which is also useful in combating some of those things that are coming at you. And Living Bomb can also sometimes be used if there's a really big army coming and then just Living Bombing them up and boom. But mostly it's just this duo going in and chickens being your main defensive tool. Then there's the second map, Kuki. For Kuki, well, you have Living Bomb. You Living Bomb the Kuki swarms, either near a tower or preferably near Kuki itself, so that they deal damage to Kuki while they go. You grab a couple of towers, again, Abomination, first of Shaman. These are going to grab some towers for you, and then you just blast in and the Abomination is going to kill Kuki, and that's pretty much it. Which leaves us to the third boss, Sneed. Sneed has the platforms that make copies, and if you get your Abomination copied, if you get your Shaman copied, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Especially if you get your Abomination copied, that's that's the worst case scenario. Also, Sneed's Molten Giants, when they get copied, that's really bad. You have Quillbore that you can try to drop on the platform, so that you can get Quill for copied sometimes. You're trying to send through the middle, you're trying to send some kobolds there. Sometimes you can also send chickens, so getting a chicken copied is obviously great. Like, if you see that copying platforms are active, and if you already, for example, have both towers, you can quickly drop some chickens and get them copied. If shamans get copied, Living Bomb does kill a group of shaman, because otherwise group of shaman is almost unkillable, because they just start healing each other. But Living Bomb does kill them, so it's not necessarily a complete disaster. But yeah, it's going to be tricky, but what you need to do is you need to get an abomination past the platform and on to Sneed, and if you manage to do that, then it's just game over. I've reached Sneed with many variants of this idea. I've reached Sneed with Prowler in this slot, I've reached it with Harpies in this slot, I have reached it with Murlocs, I have reached it with... Whelp X, I actually used Shaman over here and Whelp X over here, so that Whelp X got the bonus. Shaman can be a little bit lower level, it will still make Abomination armored, but that armored is crucial. Without that, the comp just doesn't work on high difficulties. So that I was trying to think about, okay, what if I have Whelp X and Quillbore and I can try to unbound kill Sneed? You can try something like that as well, if that's your preference. But in the end, this was the team that I managed to do it with, and... It went the first time I got to Sneed with this comp, so I don't know for sure if I was just luckier on that occasion than I was with the others, or whether this was just stronger, or whether it's because my Prowler is 22, whereas my Hobbies were 20, so maybe those two levels were the, were the factor. 20.4 instead of 20.2. Maybe that was, that was the thing that really made the final difference. Anyway, yeah, Sneed is tricky but I just have not found a surefire way for Chalga at very high difficulties to first clear the first two bosses and then also have a good time at Sneed. So this is the best I've got. And this is what it all looks like in action. All right, dead mines with Chalga. Time to put some armored abomination to work. And first boss, Mr. Smite. So we're going to try to push through the right. Here I'm placing that Abomination to the left though, because that's where the push is coming from, and I do need to defend. On these levels, like, if that push gets to my tower, I don't contest it at all, it takes away something like 70% of the tower's health. So yeah, you cannot ignore anything, pretty much here. You can ignore individual trolls. Typically, a single troll doesn't deal that much damage. Mm, what else? Well, that's pretty much... Um, Pair of Murlocs. Pair of Murlocs isn't too dangerous, but the single Prowler is 80% of your tower's health. If it gets to your tower and tower is just going to fight 1v1 against that. So, yeah, you can't afford that to happen. Here we can see some good sides of the Prowler. So, Prowler was really quick, getting the troll down, and it's also going to grab that stone for me, while I can still send the Abomination through the shorter route, because Abomination... Well, it takes its sweet time, <laughs> as you can see here, this abomination. I'm actually trying to see where that arrow points at, because I want them to go over the bridge so that they will join the main assault. I don't want to take the leftmost meeting stone, because if I take the leftmost meeting stone, then typically what happens is that the AI will start pushing more heavily from the right, and I don't want that to happen. Then I will have 
have to fight for the right meeting stone all the time, and that's that's just not good. So, just defending on the left, and chickens doing wonderful defense here. Uh, I could use something like harpies in that slot, theoretically. I could use something like a bat rider in that slot. But the problem is, once you get to very high difficulties, then those enemies are going to hit your base so very hard. Chickens also prevent the base from being hit in many occasions. Whereas flying units, even though they deal a bunch of damage, they eliminate the enemy quickly, but your base just can't tank enough. When it's a little bit lower difference, then your base can tank a little bit more, and then it's more feasible to use other alternatives. But chickens just start to shine here. And also getting some living bombs in. Yeah, those armored abominations just putting in the work. <laughs> As you can see, they also also hook the bear, because a unit can only be one type, so a bear is ranged unit, because mountaineer is a ranged unit. Anyway, I'm just trying to see, okay, that defense holds, and then I'm just pushing in with the abominations. Okay, and now, these kinds of movements happen with Charga, of course, because I'm using six cost minis, so now I, anything that I would like to do will cost six. Wondering if I need to defend there. And those are a little bit annoying, those spiderlings, because the poison. See how much the poison ticks now, even though the spiderlings already died. And if they had survived, then the poison would have ticked even more. So all of those poison ticks are just really, really scary with the spiderlings. Here I want to position, if I need to counter the Torin with an Abomination, I need to position it very far to the left. But this time I actually noticed that I have a Prowler coming, so I chose to put Abomination to my attack team and use Prowler to defend. Prowler is a lot of DPS, so Prowler was able to handle that Torin quite nicely there. And of course, if I had Harpies in the slot, they would have been able to do pretty much the same job. I was thinking about a living bomb, but because the boss went away. If the boss was close to here, I would have just living bombed all of those and dealt a bunch of damage to the boss as well. Now that the boss, boss went to the left side, then there was no reason to spend a living bomb there. Always trying to get my shaman so that it gives armor to the abomination specifically. And now I'm wondering whether I need to defend against the Thor, and I decided that I will defend, even though it does look like that smite is just going to go down and boom. That smite. And then it's time to blast at Cookie, and always, always pay attention to the cost of the next mini. You can see the grayed out mini at the bottom left, that's going to show you the next cost that's going to come up. So that you will know whether you have enough gold that you will be able to use your living bomb. Here early on it's the best case scenarios that you can send your miner early on, and you can send something like chicken or prowler or something quick to grab both chests. So then you will have a ton of gold at the start, which means that you can a bunch of minis plus you can also get your living bomb out there and as you can see living bomb just totally wrecked that initial push from from cookie and now we're starting to work on the towers on our boat towers one of the main weaknesses of this build is this i have i have practically no anti-air here I am well aware of that. Well, I mean, shaman can shoot air and living bomb can be used if I want to use a living bomb to kill that griffin rider but luckily, Armored Abominations tanked the Griffin Riders for ages. As you could see there, Armored Abomination actually tanked the Griffin Rider during the entire duration of the tower being built, and then the tower shot the Griffin Rider down. So, the lack of anti-air is a conscious choice. It's, it's not something that I'm proud of, but it is a necessity in order to, in order to just make this functional. I could use Harpies instead of the Prowler, potentially, and I have, and it does feel a little better. Pro I mean, Harpies do lose to Griffin Rider 1v1, but if there's an Abomination tank in, then Harpies obvious obviously can come in. However, maybe the Prowler did contribute something, something essential. I'm, I'm still a little uncertain about that. Anyway, I'm gonna drop some Living Bombs. Nothing too dangerous. Base can tank Bandits, Base can tank Griffin Riders. As long as the base is relatively healthy, that is, because the damage those deal is minor, and you just want to let your base do the work when it can. But it cannot tank a Prowler, it really doesn't want to tank a Huntress. Well, it can probably tank a Huntress, actually. Either way, we're sending out some Armored Abominations out there. Kuki is being so, so poisoned. 
Now I'm wondering a little bit, okay, when is the next group going to spawn? So that I will want to living bomb those, and then we do, and boom, did you see Kuki also took a bunch of damage from that. And then we have the armored abomination and all that poison coming in, and boom, Kuki goes down. But the next boss is the real challenge with this comp. So time to take on Sneed, and I really, really do not enjoy this one, because you can see those shiny platforms right up there at the top, and they are getting busy copying stuff. This time they copy up some zappers, and also we have a terrible hand. Do you see the costs of these minis? Man, we are in so much trouble. <laughs> that's, that's actually probably the worst thought that I ever had on this boss. But Living Bomb came to the rescue, and Prowler came to the rescue, and all of a sudden we're doing a little bit better. So the first copy is always the Sapper, the second copy is always the Cobalt Miner, but the third copy can often be a Molten Giant. Actually, I think sometimes the second copy is already a Molten Giant. I know for sure the third copy is often a Molten Giant. And yeah, I thought that Giant would pass the platform in time, I genuinely thought that was going to happen. I believed it. I believed. But that didn't happen. Well, it looks like we are in a lot of trouble. There's there's a whole bunch of Molten Giants coming at me. However, I do have two Armored Abominations fighting against them. There's also a Troll on the bridge. Bloody Trolls on the bridge. And an Assault coming also from the other side that I hadn't noticed. So yeah, things are definitely not going the way I wanted them to go. The base should be able to kill that troll. They should be able to handle that. Troll is actually dealing a fair bit of damage, but still minuscule compared to something like a prowler. Alright, base handled that. That's fine. Copy machine copied some chickens. Sending chickens down the middle lane is also pretty good in this map, typically, because getting chickens copied is just wonderful. You really love it when chickens are copied. So now my Abomination army has managed to <laughs> managed to conquer, conquer the tower, and I see that the Cobalt Miner is next to be copied. I allow it to be copied, yes. Now that it's copied, go, 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 go. Uh, cool down, cool down on the platform. Abominations, cross the platform, please. And uh, no, Molten Giant, yikes. Molten Giant managed to cross the platform, okay. So far so good. Although I'm not really happy about the Molten Giant coming. A Shaman, my last Shaman did get copied. But here I have a Living Bomb. I'm distracting the Molten Giant, I'm just buying a little bit of time. Because I know that those Armored Abominations will kill Sneed. Sneed is, practic Sneed is already dead. I mean, Sneed has no way to survive. Those Armored Abominations cannot be killed and they will kill Sneed. All I need to do is stay alive. If I stay alive, I win. Because Sneed is already dead. He just doesn't know it yet. And now we're pushing everything that we can to defend, and Sneed goes down, and that's that. Phew. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.